Hello, this is Bill Hunt. Welcome to this short overview and demonstration of business process management in action. If you'd like more demonstrations and a wider selection, you can go to ibmbpmdemos.com. So let's go ahead and get started. So now we're going to spend some more time in Process Designer taking a look at how we model this for execution. Let's first use the uh, playback, the run button, to run a finished version of this process, and then we'll give you a view of how how we built it out. So when we run the process, we can run it at any time. It's always runnable, no matter how much or how little we've implemented about the process model. And when we run it, it shows us where we are in the process. We can claim a particular activity, in this case a human activity. We can see the user interface for this activity. And, uh, and so it's very easy to run it and play it back to the business and IT stakeholders at any time. To give you a taste for how we built this out, we can see in this process model we added some data definition to the process. We could harvest this and pull it in from existing systems or type it in as part of a live design session. When we add new activities to the process and build them out, like this new manager activity, we can simply get a jump start on implementing this activity as either a human service or system service, a, a business role. Um, and in this case, a human service, which has a user interface, we can name that that first screen and see what it gave us a jump start on. It created a user interface with some of the high-level data elements and now we can go through an iterative playback session with uh, the business stakeholders talking about how they want this screen to look. So we can simply drag and drop the elements around and run it at any time, playing it back to the business stakeholders and then iterate through making changes like the business might uh, indicate that this planner comments field is a really important field on the screen that they use for collaborative comments between participants in the process. So we'll make that a bit more prominent and larger on the screen. Uh, we can iterate through that, making these UIs as simple or complex as we'd like. And then we can wire that new activity into the process. Again, being runnable at any time, we can incrementally and iteratively run this and play it back to the business, getting uh, feedback on, on how this looks. So let's run the process. We can see this new first activity has been built out. We can type something in the planner comments field and see if it's actually running and carried through the payload of the process. When we proceed to the second activity in the process, we can see that indeed that data was carried through the payload of the process from activity one to activity two. So in this iterative fashion, we can build out the process a little bit at a time and, uh, and, and end up with a very collaborative relationship between business and IT. Now, if we take a look at this manager activity that we were building out, it really just has one screen. We can make that uh, more elaborate. We can have multiple screens, those yellow boxes, and we can have multiple reusable services that come anywhere from IT. Like this Get Available Vendor service that will get a list of vendors before we display that vendor screen. Uh, now, these reusable services are just that, reusable. We can go to the process library to the implementation uh, components section and use some quick type ahead to sift or filter the list of reusable components down to that get vendors element. We can see that that reusable service can be dragged and dropped not only into an activity but also into any process or sub process so they're truly reusable and drilling down into it we can see the details of that reusable service. So in the process library um, we have uh, access to all the elements of processes as reusable components, processes, sub-processes, user interfaces, integration components, decision rules, data, performance metrics, uh, and so it's very easy to navigate all the elements of a process, including this toolkit section, which is simply a, an area where we can surface any reusable components from the IT landscape. So anything in the IT landscape, integrations, back-end systems, uh, components from other systems, can be surfaced here and dragged and dropped out into the process. So we can drag and drop out some of these reusable components like a back-end uh, order update integration, some business rules, and we can wire that into the process as a, a part of a decision about whether there are additional fulfillment rules. So once we wire that into the process, uh, then those elements, those reusable IT components are, uh, are now part of the process and when we run it, uh, they will run as well. If we drill down into this uh, orders update back-end service, we can see this sub-process or a composite service has uh, some detail to it, so there's lower levels of detail connecting to a back-end system, database interaction, a web service call, uh, an update to that back-end system. And so we can, we can pull in anything from the IT landscape. Now, we leverage integrated version control so that as other teams are building these, in this case, enterprise SOA services, these reusable components, we can call these toolkits anything we like, 
Um, we can reference different versions of other teams' work, and it changes right before our eyes. We get a notification of, of when things are uh, or have been updated, that little triangle, and then it's up to us whether we want to go ahead and use those different versions. And when we do, they're immediately available. So now let's spend some time in the end user experience with the process portal uh, as individual participants, managers, and executives. So let's go over to the process portal and see out of the box the process portal that works with any business process that we build out. You can see a color-coded inbox of our activities, our tasks that are overdue, at risk, or on track. We drill down into one of those activities. We can see that same single version of the truth, that same picture of the process. In this case, we can see where we are, a manager, uh, is uh, in the manager approval step in the process. So we have clarity on where we are in the process. We claim an activity and work with it. You can see with a little bit more mouse aerobics we can build out more sophisticated screens including live reports with simple drag and drop and uh, participate in the process in an optimal fashion. We also can manage the team. We can drill down on this at risk piece of the pie and see only those activities across our team that are at risk of going overdue. We can see when activities are going to go overdue in the future as well as the distribution of work uh, across the team. We can see the work uh, and how it's distributed across the team, which might lead to a decision about how we prioritize some of these at-risk items or perhaps reassign them to other members of the team. We can see the overall process performance uh, trending across days, weeks, and months, and we can see the volume and velocity of some of our most high-volume activities like manager approval and drill down into the on-track at-risk and overdue items. We can also build um, process-specific reports, ad hoc reports, with simple uh, drag and drop. Uh, and as is the case here, we can see that manager approval is taking a, a long time to complete. Uh, so let's spend some time in the process optimizer part of uh, the um, process designer and take a look at how the process per is performing. We can slice and dice the data into different time frames. We can see a heat map of wait time, the heavier red lines around the activities that are taking more or less time. Uh, we can use different heat maps like the path analysis heat map to take a look at, for instance, all of the approved and rejected items coming out of that manager approval activity. All of the 30% of elements of activities or orders that are approved, the 25% of the orders that were rejected, and see all the data down below. And we can use that spreadsheet icon to share that data with the broader analysis team. We can also get alternate views of this data, like for instance the percent of instances outside range. In other words, 69% of the time this activity is taking longer than the business expects it to take. 54% of the time this activity is violating our SLA with the business. It's taking longer than the business expects it to take. So just scratching the surface on the optimization analysis of, uh, of BPM to give you better clarity into how your process is performing and where the opportunities for optimization lie. If you'd like to get more in-depth demonstrations, more modular demonstrations on BPM, you can go to ibmbpmdemos.com, and there you'll find a collection of tutorial demos that are both uh, streaming in YouTube format as well as downloadable and viewable offline, uh, and printable hands-on exercise uh, directions. So you can watch these videos to get an idea of how BPM uh, works in action in more detail. Uh, you can also go to ibmbpmdemos.com to fire up in the cloud an online trial environment to take BPM for test drive.